Only the other day I finished reading The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde and since I already started watching Penny Dreadful before and I've read this I thought why not do a comparison video between the Dorian Gray in Oscar Wilde's novel and the Dorian Gray in Penny Dreadful. But I didn't stop there. Yesterday I bought the 2009 film of Dorian Gray starring Ben Barnes and I thought well if I have all these three different sources of Dorian Gray why not compare them? Essentially, The Picture of Dorian Gray is a story about an innocent young gentleman who, on meeting a man named Lord Henry, spirals into a life of debauchery and an endless pursuit for passions, basically leaving his soul irrevocably corrupted. The greatest drawing point of the novel is the painting of Dorian Gray. After having only spoken to Lord Henry for a few moments, Dorian Gray starts feeling influenced by his philosophy and becomes very cautious and worried about his youth and where that will go in the years to come. Um, and so in this moment where he sees the painting and sees how youthful he is and that this painting will never age, he makes this naive wish, pinning his soul to the painting so that he remains youthful and beautiful while the painting will bear his sins and age. In Penny Dreadful, John Logan purposely decided to refrain from the original Dorian Gray and this is very evident in the way that his character doesn't particularly conform to the character development found in Oscar Wilde's novel. In the original story, he is in some ways quite petulant um, but caring and fond of his visage in many ways, he's a very wholesome, good character with just a very innocent mindset. But gradually, he turns into something more dark and where once he was caring and his face was full of comfort, he has a darker malice and has an indifference towards the um, to other, many other people but himself. One of the greatest things about Dorian Gray is he's a character who's very beautiful and known for his good looks and charm. So one of the big things about him is that he's got a magnetic effect on people, whether it be man or woman. John Logan definitely carries this across in Penny Dreadful, where we find that through the use of shots and music, there's some sort of entrancing, captivating feeling when you're watching Reeve play Dorian Gray. And I can't quite put my finger on it, but that is the one influence from the novel which John Logan has taken over into Penny Dreadful and one of the most important aspects to which makes Dorian Gray Dorian Gray. He has to be alluring and attractive and sensual and I think John Logan captured that really well. Pleasure is a big aspect of Dorian Gray. Um, influenced by Lord Henry, he believes that all men should sort of succumb to their wants um, and desires and so that any pleasure is unbound to them and of course this is going to be marked on his painting. As for the film adaptation of Dorian Gray, I didn't get quite the same feeling of this magnetic attraction to Ben Barnes' Dorian Gray. I think what would have been suited well to the 2009 film is if they used more extreme close-up shots or panning and tilt shots so it would show more of his body in the way that say say you have in films the um camera looking at a woman objectifying them in a way and i think that's what would have to happen with dorian gray because it's like your eye is raking down his body and that's the effect that anyone would have on upon looking at him i often got the impression that in the novel dorian gray was still the sort of inexperienced person who still had no idea on the ways of the world, whereas in Penny Dreadful he's very mischievous and mysterious, enigmatic, and I think that's what holds the attraction for the Penny Dreadful character. Personally, I think I prefer how John Logan depicts Dorian Gray, even if it isn't simply to the same way that Oscar Wilde had described his original character. There's the impression that throughout the novel there's a theme of homosexuality which in the 1800s meant that this novel wasn't received well by the public. My own thoughts on the novel, um, 
I think this is an eccentric idea and I love how it was composed, it's out of the ordinary and it joins alongside all these other gothic novels like Dracula and The Monk and Frankenstein as a sort of gothic and thrilling captivating story. The side of criticism that I give this novel is for one, there were many, well there were a few bits which I just got plainly bored about. Um, that might have been because I didn't understand it. Um, it's, uh, there's a chapter in the novel which basically explains what happened during the 18 years um, from Dorian Gray being 20 to his transition to being 38. And in this chapter it's just describing how we had this intense revelation and need to explore different parts of things, whether it be to do with religion, whether it be to do with tapestries, music, and it would always go into sort of the history of things, but it would be just this massive expansion of just random thoughts, and I don't know, I, that didn't exactly appeal to me, because it was just giving these sort of little facts or just little information bits, but it wasn't really giving much of a story, it was just saying how his fascination with certain jewels and how it did this and how it did this, but it was literally just like a roll call of names as if you were citing out of a textbook and it kind of it didn't really appeal to me in that way and there were times when Lord Henry would make his long discussions about different things there's a lot of long complex sentences used by Lord Henry and he's sort of the philosopher in this story thinking he knows everything when in fact many of his views really infuriated me, infuriated me because he is very sexist and he believes in totally the wrong pursuits which led to Dorian Gray's corruption. There were just many times that he just drivel on and it just wasn't interesting but apart from that I actually thought Dorian Gray's character shone through. It was also nice seeing how Oscar Wilde explored relationships in such a weirdly non-explicit way like Dorian Gray's homosexuality and his basic sexual intrigue. I always find my videos I'm not quite explaining myself enough I'm pretty much driveling on about the same subject because I just have this random amount of points to bring in and then just explain from there so I hope there is something you can take from this video about Dorian Gray which is so great about it and then how that compares to more so Penny Dreadful's character maybe that might help there but yeah so if you like the video please like it Subscribe for more stuff to come from me soon.